Have you got the urge to reach out to your ex even though you know you shouldn't? I'll show you what to do instead in this video and it's not only going to stop your urge to reach out to him, but it's actually going to help you heal more quickly from the relationship. Like my client Nicole who learned this skill and despite being really tempted to reach out to her ex, once she started dating and felt like she had healed, Nicole was able to ride the wave, not reach out to him and as a result is fast tracking her way to healing from her breakup. So when you get that really strong urge to reach out to your ex, perhaps you you've broken up with them a couple of days ago, weeks, months, maybe it's been quite a while and you have that little twinge of, oh, I'm healing. I'm settled now. It'll be okay. I can still reach out to them. Here's why you shouldn't. And this is what you need to focus on instead. Firstly, when the urge comes up, really allow yourself to acknowledge it before you instantly go out acting on the impulse, which is what we're used to doing, right? We feel something and then we act on it. And it kind of feels like you don't have a choice. And before you know it, you're reaching for the phone and texting them. I want you just to pause before you do any kind of action and allow yourself to sit a little bit in the discomfort of wanting to reach out to your ex. Just that initial moment of allowing yourself to contact the discomfort in your body and in your emotions is going to help. And here's why. Primarily when you have an urge like that, the action of reaching out to your ex gives you relief from the discomfort of that emotion. But if you're able to be with the loneliness, the self self-doubt, the vulnerability. If you're actually able to be with those emotions, there's less chance you're going to need to actually do something to relieve it. Because that part of you that wants to reach out to your ex is feeling that way just to get relief, right? Also, when you want to reach out to your ex, it's because you want to feel some kind of connection with them to relieve you of that emotion of perhaps loneliness or sadness. You want some kind of validation that they're still on the other end of the line, that they don't completely hate you. And if they don't reply back, if they ignore you or they send you something hurtful, it just reinforces your low self-esteem in that moment, which also relieves you from that initial emotion because it then moves you into shame thinking oh yeah I'm still a bad person or it's still my fault or he didn't choose me and that shame can just take over instead so these are all impulses we have to get away from the pure discomfort of sadness or the type of grief you're experiencing in that moment but if you can sit with yourself and be with whatever emotion is bubbling up for you in that moment that is the first step the trailhead into changing your own patterns of behavior and fast tracking your healing after this breakup. It's actually going to open up a whole world of change for you, not just in this moment, but in how you show up in intimate relationships in general. Because a lot of what we do in intimate relationships is reactive behavior, and it's because we don't have the emotional or somatic capacity to hold uncomfortable feelings and emotions in our body without doing something to offload it. So the reason you feel the urge to reach out to them is because you've been with them for a long period of time or a period of time they've been your person and you're now going through a grieving period as they're no longer your person it's really natural when we grieve something that ends to cling to it right to cling to whatever it was and to also remember the best in what it was our brains have this magical way of only remembering the good times when we've left a relationship that wasn't right for us or perhaps there were good and bad things but once it's ended you only remember the good now this is why by only remembering the good times your brain is working to stay in connection with your ex even though you don't have the connection anymore because you've broken up your brain is actually trying to protect the connection you had with your ex by keeping it alive by thinking about only the good things because connection is a primal need that we all have as human beings so remembering those good memories those good times that connection stays alive within you and you also put off having to deal with the uncomfortable emotions of grieving and letting go now, this is not a conscious choice you're making, right? It's an instinct that kicks in when a relationship ends, which is why it's handy to keep a list of all the reasons you broke up with your ex in a place where you can read it every day, because reminding yourself of why you've broken up works to chip away that instinct that is resisting grief. There's also familiarity and comfort you've now lost, right? Maybe you were cohabitating with them. Maybe you had a really amazing friendship as well, or maybe there was just something you were getting out of the relationship 
relationship that you're not getting now. It's hard, right, to lose comfort and familiarity of someone that you once had. It's like it would be hard to have a steady supply of chocolate and then all of a sudden have absolutely no access to chocolate whatsoever. Now, the reason I'm using chocolate as an analogy is because we get a lot of dopamine from both chocolate and intimate relationships. And when you struggle with attachment wounding, that dopamine hit you get from an intimate relationship contact is enough to keep you in that relationship despite the pain and anguish and maybe even trauma you're experiencing if it's an unhealthy relationship. So when you got dopamine from being with your ex, it might have been physical like sex or connection or maybe the fantasy projection you had of what the relationship was, that dopamine is something your body was hooked onto in that relationship. Now that you've broken up with your body, it's in withdrawal because you now no longer have access to it, which is why you might be eating more chocolate or comfort foods during this time to make up for it and get that dopamine. You might also be second guessing and going through the circumstances of the breakup and thinking about what you did, what they did. Was there a way we could have saved the relationship? You might be overthinking. And again, this is just another state of play in the mind to avoid the discomfort of the emotions that come with grieving. Our bodies, our minds and hearts really resist grieving. And now it's really hard to resist grieving when someone's died because death is very final. Sorry to be morbid, but a relationship breakdown often isn't final. Often it's messy. There are so many angles to look at it from, and there are lots of different versions of the truth. So you wanting to reach out might be coming from a part within you that is still trying to make sense of the breakup. But the truth is there's nothing that reaching out to your ex is going to help you get more information about. Sure, emotions were high when the breakup happened. So your emotional brain was in control and maybe your logical brain missed out on some important pieces of information that it's now wanting to get. But you are never going to get an absolute truth to fully appease this part of you because there are always going to be several versions of a breakup. There will always be details for you to overthink because a breakup doesn't just involve one person and one truth, it involves two people at least. So you're best to stay within your version of what you know is true for you and just allow yourself the grace of saying, I didn't know what I didn't know. And that's okay. And allow yourself to stay inside this bubble of your knowledge that is your truth. Because if you open up a can of worms with your ex and connect with them, if they're even open to it, it's just going to re-wound you in some way. It's like ripping the scab off a deep cut that's finally started to heal. And the risk of it making things worse and re-wounding yourself and dragging out the healing process is huge. Which brings me to my next main point. The impact of contacting your ex is something you probably don't consider consider in that moment. But as someone who works in this space, I see the impact of women who do this as opposed to women who don't. And I want to share this with you because it's really amazing the difference. So typically the women I work with in my program rarely reach back out to their ex. They've come into the program after they've broken up, wanting to really finally change their patterns for good, which involves giving them this vacuum of not being in contact with their ex. And this gives them a head start, a chance to heal. They can focus on what is relevant for them to heal, what they are in control of, what their patterns are, what their past is, and what their core were wounds that came up and were triggered during the breakup. And they can just deal with the simplicity of what is real and what is in front of them and in their body. As opposed to women who reach out to their ex during their healing journey, and maybe they keep their ex on the scene, staying friends. Honestly, they are constantly reopening themselves to wounding and re-experiencing the breakup again and again. And it just drags out the process. And much like my earlier metaphor, if you have a wound on your arm and it scabs over, if you read rip that scab off, that wound is going to take longer to heal. Every time you reach out to your ex, it's like ripping that scab off again and again. That scar is not going to heal well. It's going to be bigger. It's going to take longer to heal. It's probably going to be deeper and it's going to be a lot more uncomfortable over time. Your ex is effectively an unknown variable. They're not someone you can control, nor should you try to control because they're an independent person. And when you're healing, it's really important to give yourself a vacuum to go through the grieving process. If you have this open loop of communication with the person that hurt you and was involved in the trauma of the breakup, because breakups are traumatic, you're constantly letting in this new, potentially harmful energy into your emotional space. And you're always on the back foot trying to fit this experience 
experience of being in contact with your ex into your healing journey. You are much better off being in a vacuum and giving yourself the grace and time you deserve to heal. Now, this is the part I really, really need you to hear. Remember these words, write them down when you want to reach out to your ex. The part of you that wants to reach out to your ex is a scared, vulnerable, fragile part of you that needs you to show up for her, not your ex. It's like needing the right medicine to heal an ailment. You can't just eat candy and think that that's going to make it heal. It's going to make you more sick in the process. Just like if you keep reaching out to your ex, you just keep self-abandoning at a time when your inner child needs you the most. This is the time, if there's any time during your life, that you now need to show up for her, for yourself. Now is that time after a breakup because this is when your internal parts are at their most vulnerable and need you the most. So that part of you that is yearning for connection that is yearning to have what you had with your ex that is wanting so badly to feel safe with him again that is a very important part of you and she's been in there trying to find a home and a man or a woman or whatever your orientation is for a long time for a long time that part of you has been running the show it's like letting a little child put her hands on the steering wheel and drive the car while you the conscious mature adult are just sitting in the back seat being like yep yeah, let's go for the ride let's see where this goes we all know where that ends a complete car wreck but now that part of you needs you to show up for it she needs an adult in the driving seat not to reach out to your ex but to be reparented by you these are skills you don't don't have yet that's okay we're here to learn skills we can learn something new it's like learning how to ride a bike part of learning the skill is learning why this part is constantly reaching out for your ex and not using your inner discernment and never acting in your own best interest and probably repeat repeating the same unhealthy relationship patterns again and again without you realizing that you are the common denominator that's why it's really important to look at your relationship blueprint where did you learn how to love from what messages did you receive around love do you feel worthy of love? Was it abundant or was it scarce around you? If you have secure attachment, you would have learned that love is unconditional and you don't need to perform for love. You learned in your body that all emotions feel safe and it's okay to feel when it's uncomfortable. But chances are, if you're on this channel, you don't have secure attachment. You're wanting that, but you grew up in an environment where your parents or caregivers were emotionally unavailable, absent or physically not there, and maybe had abandoned you. Maybe there was was a divorce or a death in the family, some kind of little or capital T trauma in your family. Now, when I say little T trauma, I mean subtle attachment trauma, like emotional neglect. Maybe your parents were really loving and they were there, but they weren't emotionally there for you. They were kind of stuck in their own worlds and you perceived emotional abandonment and you were sent to your room to sort through your big feelings on your own when you didn't have the developmental capacity to do that. On the other end of the spectrum is capital T trauma, which is where your parents might, might not have been loving at all, or there was significant trauma, um, again, and death, divorce, and you learned what love was from those relationship experiences. That's the only thing you know love to be. The way your parents or caregivers loved you is the primary way you learned to love. So when people ask me why their friendships and their careers are great, but their romantic relationships always go to pieces, it's because your parents or caregivers formed your attachment blueprint. You didn't learn how to have friendships from your parents. Probably you didn't learn how to have a career from your parents. You probably figured that out on your own and you did a great job, but you learned right down to your core what love is from them. You've inherited a whole Pandora's box of generational trauma messages and socialization if you're a woman, and that informs how you love. So the insecure attachment you now have from those experiences is how you attach in your adult relationships. And when you break up with someone, what tends to happen is all of those wounds get triggered. It's kind of like a melting pot of core wounds. They bubble to the surface, which is actually a true gift because this is the best time to heal. When I look at clients of mine who've healed well, it's because when they started to do the deep healing work, when they were the most triggered, they showed up for themselves, which is why I recommend coming into Heal Your Heart School when you've gone through a breakup. You are ripe to do this work because all of your wounds and memories and beliefs are bubbling to the surface. So how does this relationship blueprint relate back to the situation where you want to reach out to your ex? 
The part of you that's yearning to reach out is the strongest part within you, carrying the torchlight of your insecure blueprint from childhood and all the messages that you learned from your parents that you're not good enough, you'll never be loved, love is scarce. And again, they might not have told you this, but you just insinuated this from the circumstances and this caused you to cling to whatever love you were given these are all carried out by that young part. So when that part of you, that little kid is in control in the driver's seat, it feels differently in your body and you'll be thinking different things, more limiting beliefs like a negative filter or shame, scarcity. And you may not notice when you're inhabiting that part of who you are, you may be very blended with it and that is okay. But all that baggage is what that little part of you carries. She's scared, she's uncertain, she's grieving, but she doesn't know how to process big emotions and she's trying to reach out to your ex to avoid her emotional state, to feel connection with them again, to get validation and to just avoid the discomfort of whatever emotions are coming up. So we need to learn how to reparent this part so that not only are you not going to reach out to your ex, but you're actually going to heal well from the breakup. Now, the simplest way to do this is to learn tools that process and reparent emotions moment by moment that you can do yourself rather than waiting to go see a therapist, which can be helpful as well, but you get to take charge of your own healing journey when you learn these tools. So when you feel that urge, like I said at the beginning of this video, before you reach out to your ex, just stop and sit with what's present. What is coming up? What is the discomfort like? In this moment, can you allow yourself to lean in or is it too much? Lean into the discomfort or the edges of it if you can and lean into what this part is wanting. Like ask it, what do you want? What, what is it saying? What are the words that are coming up in you? And when I say lean in, I mean welcome it, right? It's like welcoming an old friend for tea. That friend is not going to stay forever. You're not going to want to reach out to your ex forever, but you're going to welcome it for now because it's here knocking at the door saying, I want to reach out to him. Welcome it, bring it in for tea, have a conversation with it in your mind, get to know it. Why do you want that? What do you feel it will achieve? I'm curious, what's your thought process here? What do you think it will benefit us? And this is not just about cognitively understanding this part from the mind because our trauma is actually primarily trapped in our body. We can cognitively try to do this and focus on our thinking and talking, but we really need to drop into the body, which is where you hold your trauma and notice how it feels. Because honestly, letting ourselves feel discomfort and widening our window of tolerance to do this is the key to changing these patterns. And it is going to feel very counterintuitive to lean into discomfort and anguish and anxiety and obsessiveness. Because our default is to run away from it, right? But when we run away, it actually magnifies, right? It doesn't go away from running away from it. So if you get what I'm saying, you'll know that when you lean into it and give it space and allow it to occupy your body for a period of time, it will actually diminish. So if your window of tolerance isn't wide enough, if you're crying at the drop of a hat, you might feel uncontrollable. Focus on self-soothing and feeling grounded and centered in your body before you do any kind of reparenting work. If the break up is fresh you probably just need to focus on riding the waves of grief because it's sometimes necessary to just allow ourselves to let the emotions flow to the degree that you can and then disconnect or disassociate by watching Netflix or eating chocolate or whatever when you've had enough it's perfectly normal when you go through a breakup that's a way to ride through the emotions of grief but when you have the ability to work on this reparenting process which is going to change deeper patterns for you Dropping into this work with this part looks not only like validating it and understanding it, but feeling into it in your body and allowing it to express itself somatically in your body and ultimately loving it as deeply as you can, right? Come into relationship with this small, scared, young part of you so that you truly feel love for the anxious, vulnerable child who has its sticky hands on the steering wheel all of these years in your relationships because it actually thinks it's keeping you safe by constantly reaching out to your ex or dating emotionally unavailable people because it's just replicating the pattern that you had with your primary caregivers. That's all it knows. You know, your higher self knows something different, but you don't feel it in your body yet. That's why we need to do the reparenting process somatically. So you will eventually integrate that into your body and start to learn a new version of healthy love. Permanent change is just not going to happen until you feel the shift from within your body. Now, I teach all these skills in Heal Your Heart School, but I just want to summarize that when you've healed your trauma, when you've healed this part of you and it's on board with you, it trusts you, it trusts that it can rely on you, that it doesn't need to reach 
reach out to your ex anymore because you've got things under control. When that happens, you're then able to start actually rewiring your body into learning what a healthy relationship feels like before you've even attracted one. It's a beautiful process. So I invite you, if this is something you want to learn how to do, book a free consultation call with me in the link below and I can walk you through how I do it inside the program. I'd love to meet you. And then in the meantime, here are some next step videos for you to watch so you can move one step closer to having a truly beautiful relationship with yourself and breaking your old patterns. And for now, I will see you in the next video.